me also tell you about the challenges and the pressures being faced by the Aditya L1 team. Remember, the sun is the source of most of our energy here on Earth, if not all, sitting millions and millions of miles away when the sun is direct, like in summer, withstanding its heat is unbearable. We all know that. Imagine how hot it is to go relatively just a few million miles closer to it. That in itself is an enormous challenge because the closer you get to the sun, you have to see to believe how exponentially more difficult technologically it becomes, not just to observe, but just to exist. Sun is a massive hot ball of plasma, inflated, heated by nuclear fusion from its core. That's about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit or 15 million degrees Celsius hot. It's impossible to physically explore the sun, at least till now, as technology hasn't developed to tolerate that kind of heat without being consumed in flame. Yet it's important to know the closest star available in this solar system to learn more about planets, especially Earth and this galaxy and what lies beyond. So the main challenge is to maintain a safe distance from the sun. Solar missions so far have all been stationed between different lag range points. Aditya L1, for example, is scheduled to be stationed at L1. It would roughly be 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth and 148.5 million kilometers away from the Sun. The Sun, during its own rotation, keeps throwing particles during solar storms. So there is a constant stream of charged particles that escape from the sun's atmosphere and spread across space. So the solar mission must be stationed at a point safely to conduct safe viewing without obstruction. This will ensure near accurate prediction and alert of any charged particles coming from the sun and in which direction it's going. Next is the need to build a system that can withstand the heat even from a distance of those many million miles and yet remain functional. In effect, it means that while the exposed part of the spacecraft is heated beyond any human imagination, it has to be freezing cold from inside. It's a technical and engineering challenge to achieve. All of these functions will require high fuel efficiency, just like a car does in peak summer heat because once it runs out of fuel, it can't refuel itself. There is no closest petrol pump for it in space. This brings us to the next technical challenge of heavy payloads with high fuel efficiency to sustain for years. By now it's clear that all these require dedicated hard work, research and resources. Because it's going to be a very costly affair and the cost runs into billions. India's Aditya, of course, is the least expensive in the world, with a price tag of $45 million. When it's that expensive, simple economics demands that it sustains many, many years safely to carry out the experiments and relay information back to Earth to justify the efforts that have been put in. Because the knowledge gained is immense and it helps know the universe better with every millisecond the spacecraft remains in its mission close to the sun. Akshita, where is Dr. Somnath, you know, the directors, etc. Where are all of them right now? Are they, you know, are they inside the center right now? They're inside Shiv. So is the entire ISRO team. I see a lot of VVIP movement, by the way. There's security all around me, a lot of CISF officials who are doing the necessary checks. But we know that the ISRO team is inside. Dr. Jitendra Singh arrived uh, also and is also there right now. So the entire team is currently present. Uh, at this point, they're going to be ensuring that all necessary checks and balances are done. Uh, but we saw those images also yesterday, Shiv, uh, of all of our ISRO scientists ensuring that they also uh, put in a, a, a word as 
essentially with the gods uh, seeking their blessings. You had a team of scientists going to the Tirumala Tirupati temple. Uh, you had Dr. Somnath also visiting another temple in Tirupati, which is where he always goes. And they always submit a prototype, a model of uh, the Aditya L1 and, of course, uh, the PSLV, uh, India's Bahubali, as he's referred to, who does all of that hard work and ensures that he really pumps Aditya L1 right into space and puts him in that orbit uh, between the Earth and the Sun. So everything's in place as of now. And like I said, this is the part that Israel's most confident of. This is their biggest strength, launches. They do it for other countries as well, Shiv, because that's how good we are at it. So this particular point is something that, yes, they will be very confident of. But having said that, the focus is also going to be on their four-month journey. So you're going to have an ISRO team constantly, 24 bar 7 monitoring. Imagine this shift. First, you had Chandrayaan mm -hmm. 3. They're still working with the rover on ensuring that everything's going smoothly with regards to the uh, you know, study of the moon. And at the same time, they're now working on the sun. Next four months is going to be occupied in that. At the same time, they're working on Gaganyaan, uh, for which you're going to see the first test vehicle launch happening yes. in just about 20 days from now. Uh, uh, in the first week of October is what Dr. Somnath said. And then you have another mission, a mission to Venus also, which is being worked on. So they've got their hands full. Clearly, they're not complaining. They're continuing to work hard and, of course, bring us endless glory. Uh, ISRO runs at a very, very high tempo, very, very high motor, kind of motor that most uh, uh, you know, of us don't understand. I'm, I know that Akshita does because she spent so much time with ISRO. But the, the, the very fact that ISRO is able to juggle all of these missions, be able to monitor Chandrayaan-3, uh, you know, uh, the active phase of which will be coming to an end soon, uh, and then Aditya L1, and then Gaganyan, and then uh, you know perhaps another Mangalyan to the to the to Mars. Akshita was talking about a mission to Venus as well. So this is a space organization that's able to tick not just tick all the boxes, but do it at an incredibly low cost compared to uh, you know a comparable space missions by other agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency. India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics koi doot ke se dula hua nahi hai unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become grey as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's 100% news that matters it's news today with rajdeep sardesai monday to friday 9 pm only on india today tv India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics koi doot ke se dula hua nahi hai unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become grey as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's 100% news that matters it's news today with rajdeep sardesai monday to friday 9 pm only on india today tv India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics koi doot ke se dula hua nahi hai unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become grey as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's 100% news that matters it's news today with rajdeep sardesai monday to friday 9 pm only on india today tv